Okay, welcome back to the next episode in the platform tutorial that I'm making here in Con Construct 3. Um, a couple of things I want to do in this episode. Um, number one, I want to fix a, an issue where the enemy is shooting towards the base of the player. So if I click on the play button now, you can see that when he sees us, the bullets just go down towards kind of where the player's feet would be. So that's not what we want. And the reason for that is because of the image point of the player. We need to add a second image point that we want to set as the target. Um, and that's where we want to send the bullets once they get spawned by the enemy. Um, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to add a sign movement to these coins. So they just kind of bob nice and gently up and down, which is going to make a little, add a little bit more polish to the game. Um, and we're also going to add a way to fight back. Uh, we're going to add some bombs, so we're going to do a little bit of pixel art in the editor right here itself. So you don't need any additional software, you can just simply follow along. Everything's in 16 by 16, so it's simply just a case of copy what I do and click little dots in little places to get your own little bombs. Um, we're going to add a sign behavior for those as well and make them kind of pulse in size um, to make them a little bit more desirable to the eye. Once we collect them, we're going to add a HUD element, so we're going to add a way to track how many bombs we have. Um, for now, we're just going to do a number, but as we get into later episodes, we're going to des fully design the HUD so it looks really pretty. Uh, we're going to add an image um, to show the bomb itself with a number, obviously, how many we have. And obviously, if we have zero, then we're not going to be able to use that. Uh, if we have more than zero, so one or more, we can then drop bombs. The bombs are going to have a little timer, so they're going to wait a few seconds and they're going to explode. And then if the blast hits one of the enemies then the enemy will die. So there's a little bit of a way for us to fight back. So let's get into that. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long, probably about 20 to 30 minutes to get all of this done. Um, so follow along and let's go. First thing we want to do, go into the enemies, enemies tab here. Um, and we want to go into the function that we created last time. So on function enemy shooting, this is where we want to add in um, that new image point. So you can see here that I've already done it. Um, I was playing around before the video started just to make sure that I was getting it set up correctly. So if you go down the lines of code here where it says um, SPR underscore enemy one, spawn the enemy bullet on layer zero at image point. If you can double click on that. If you've got a zero in here, just change that to a one and then save it and then go back to the layer and then double click in the player click on the image point icon here you can see we've only got one at the moment and that number is zero and that is the image point right at the base center of the player right click over here where it says origin and then just add a new image point and that will be image point one by default and the number will be one you can double click and name these if you want so we could name it target but we're okay we don't have a huge amount to worry about so i'm happy just to go with the numbers if you had a lot of different image points obviously you could name them you know whatever you wanted to but for what we want, the one will be fine. Now we go back over to enemies. Yep, you've got the image point one there. That's now going to correlate to the image point one right here. Um, and by default, that sets it right to the center as well. So if it's not already in the center, just click in the center. You can do it by hitting five if you've got a number pad. Um, or you can just right click the image point and then you can quick assign to any position in the sprite. Right, close that down, hit play. Let's see what happens. Hey, he's still shooting at our feet. Let's have a look. Double click. Uh, not that one. Uh, set, okay. Okay, sorry, so we've set the, um, sorry, we've set the bullet to spawn on the enemy layer zero at image point one which is there. Sorry, that's where we want the, the bullet to spawn from. We want it to go to image point one on the player, sorry. So where we say enemy bullet set angle, this is where we need to change that code. Sorry, it's early in the morning for me over here. So the angle we want to set is, we want to start it at the um, self.x, self.y. So that's the bullet's original x and y position. And we want to send it to the player um, dot x dot y, but we want to send it to the image point. Um, so the way we can do that is by saying player dot start typing image and go image point x and then in brackets put one and then on y we can do player uh, sprite underscore player dot image and then scroll down to image point y click that and then in brackets after the y put one 
So effectively what that does is it sets it to the image point and you can change that. And if that was a, uh, a name, you could put it in, uh, in there as well. Um, if it was a different image point, whatever it is, you can just put it in there. Click done and now that bullet is going to be sent to the player's image point. So if we just check uh, that works fine, there we go. Now he's shooting at us. And the reason why he just shot diagonally up is because there's no player on the screen. It just defaults to the zero zero position, which is straight up there. But that works fine. Now he's trying to shoot directly towards the center of us. And I can just drop off the edge and die. Great. Perfect. That's fixed. Now let's go into the coin. Double click, uh, sorry, just click on any of the coins. Go over to the left hand side in the properties panel. Click on behavior. Add new behavior, we're going to add a sign, close that down, come back over to the left and you've got the behavior sitting right here, sign, we don't want it horizontal, we're going to do a vertical movement, so just drop that down, click on vertical, the wave is going to be a sine wave, and when I like to pulse uh, pickups and, ic and icons on the screen, I like to put them at a magnitude and period of 1 of 1, I just think that, that looks really, really nice. Um, okay, we're going to need to change it for all the coins now. That's not too bad. If we drag out an instance of these, they'll obviously keep the same settings, but because we can change the um, the settings on each one, which could be easy if, if you know if you wanted different things to do different things, we want them all to be the same. So let's just quickly whiz through this. One and one. Why don't I make so many coins? One and one. I'm just going to delete the rest of these. We will probably change the layout, the way that the level looks anyway, so I can drag out more instances of these as and when we need to, but that's fine. For what we need, that, that'll be fine. Hit, hit play. Let's have a look and see. So you can see they're bobbing up and down now. Oh, these are horizontal. That's the one I bobbed. Oh, okay, because we have to change them all. Okay, let's just delete everything except the one that we used. It's not a big deal. Just to save um, just to save time. We can drag out more instances as and when we need them. Let's pop that there. Let's drag out one more. So hold down control or command and just pull out a copy. And now you'll see those two will just bob up and down. If I jump up and down just to avoid getting killed. You can see they just bob nicely up and down on the screen there, which is quite a nice little effect. Right. Now we need to make some bombs. So we're going to do a little bit of pixel art. So double click. Anywhere, make sure you're on layer zero over on the right in the layers panel. Double click anywhere you like, click sprite, and then click anywhere in the layout. And we're going to change the size because the game that we're making is 16 by 16. So change the width and the height. Let's scroll in a little bit. And now we need to make a bomb. So grab a circle over here, change the outline to black. Nope. Switch these around. So black's on the bottom, outline's on the bottom. Just come in one from the top and drag it down. If you go try and go right down to one of the bottom, it's not going to even up with the with the whole thing. So I'll just come in one, just so it's a little bit more even. And then what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to bring the whole thing down. So if you highlight it and then click and drag, so it's just sitting on the bottom here. That's going to give me a little bit of room at the top to draw in the kind of fuse uh, that I want just to kind of be sitting there. Um, bombs are a kind of dark color, but I don't like to go just gray. So we're going to, on the color palette, we're going to go slightly into the red and orange to make a brown. And then we're going to go quite dark and we're going to fill that in. I think it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye than just grays. Um, go a little bit darker again, grab the pencil tool and let's put some shading on the bottom. Not there just along the bottom there and then fill in these dots and then go down that one side and then for the highlight we're going to come down a little bit lighter that looks good to me and then where these little bits fill in here come down one and one so kind of if you put one there kind of look a bit of a bowling ball um, but just the two there will be fine and then I think I might just leave it with the two um, just for the highlights if we go a little bit lighter Maybe I can put two in there. Is that, I'd like to zoom out and see what it would look like in game. Yeah, I don't like it. I think I'm just going to stick with the two. But I'm going to make those two just a bit, a bit brighter. Uh, and then the fuse, I'm going to use the same color as a highlight. I'm just going to go somewhere in the middle here. I'm going to go up two. Then I'm going to go 
No, I'm going to go up two, I'm going to go across one, and then I'm going to go diagonally across two at the top there. And then at the end, because the end will probably be lit up, we're going to go with an orange color. And then just to add a bit of variety, I'm going to select the color of the fuse here, go slightly darker, and I'm going to just do every other one in that color. Then for the last thing, drag it all the way to black, pop a black dot underneath there, and then close it down. Let's see what that looks like in game. Yeah, that looks okay to me. I quite like that. So what we want to do is now make that obviously pulse. So let's give it a behavior. Scroll down to the sign behavior. And then on this one, instead of horizontal or vertical, we're going to go size. So we're going to pulse the size. And again, we're going to give it a one on a one because I like that, that pulse range. And now you'll see it's just pulsing in and out. So it makes it a little bit more desirable to pick up. It's like saying, hey, come and get me. Come and pick me up. Here I am. But we can't pick it up right now because we've not, um, we've not scripted that in. But yeah, I think it looks quite nice. Now, let's pop one up there so it's a little bit more difficult to collect. Let's give it a new name, SPR underscore bomb. Now we need to put an element in the HUD to track how many bombs we have. So we've got, if we just click on the top left hand text, which is currently tracking our score, we've got txt underscore score, right click and then clone the object type. Just click underneath it. It's going to create a second one and we're going to call this one txt underscore bomb. And this is going to, what's going to track our bombs in the initial stage. Um, I may not even, um, have this in the HUD, I haven't decided yet. I may just replicate this with just little pictures of bombs. So you know how you can have like hearts in a row that if you get hit, you lose a heart. I might just have a maximum inventory of maybe five bombs that you can pick up that you can hold at any one time. So if you pick up five, you've got five little bombs. Every time you drop one, it drops and leaves a kind of shadow of its former self there. So you can see that there's an empty slot. Uh, we'll, we'll decide as we go. Um, but, that, but that's what I'm kind of initially thinking. But for now, I just need a text item so I can track and make sure that that's working, uh, whether we display it or not, again, it, it doesn't really matter. So txt underscore bomb, and then we also need, obviously, a global variable like we have with the score and the timer to be able to track those. So right-click anywhere down here, add a global variable, and we're going to call this bombs, and it's a number, and obviously we start the game with zero, so leave it as zero. And now what we're going to say in the event sheet, um, we're going to prop our oh, collectibles here where we've got coin. We're going to add a new uh, line that says every time we touch that bomb, the bomb's going to disappear and we're going to add one, just like we did, in fact, exactly what we did with, with the coins here. So uh, click add event to collectibles. We're going to use the player, which is in sprites, and we do need to organize that folder. On collision with another object, choose object, sprite bomb, then sprite bomb is going to destroy itself because we'll have picked it up and then we're going to go system add to bombs one now let's just give it a quick test see if that works so we currently have oh i didn't put the text on the right layer it's on layer zero which is on not on the parallax layer so i need to put that on the hud layer because the hud layer is on a parallax of zero and zero, if I show you on there, which means it will just stay put at the top of the screen. There it is. Collect my coins, two coins. Oh, because I didn't set, you may have already spotted that, I'm getting ahead of myself. We didn't set the text, so we need an every tick here. So every minute of the game, every second, oh, sorry, every frame of the game, we're gonna update that bomb text to display what's in that global variable. So text underscore bomb, set text to bombs. Make sure it's the one with the little globe next to it. And now that will work just fine. There we go, we've got one bomb. But that's all the bombs I have on the screen. Okay, now we need to add some code in to say that if we press a button and the bombs are greater than zero, so one or more, then we need to do something. And that something will be to spawn a bomb on the map 
um, so that it can explode and kill the player. So we need to put that into the player controls because it's a control that we're going to press. And you can use any button you want for this, but I'm going to use the space bar. So add event to player controls and we need the inputs folder because we need to call the keyboard and we can say not on key is down because that's if it's being held down but like with the W for jump on key pressed and that key is going to be spacebar so just hit space click OK done then once we press this key then we need to check a few things because we can't just have it so that when we press space we drop a bomb because that's going to completely negate this variable here so we only want to be able to do this if we have a bomb in our inventory so to do that we're going to create a blank sub event so click on the little arrow here push B um, and then double click in here and we're going to do a system check so we're going to go system and we're going to compare a variable and we're going to compare bombs so we're going to say if bombs are greater than or equal to one so basically anything except zero or less then we're going to do something so when we press spacebar we're going to check to see if the bombs if we have bombs and if we do have bombs then what we want to do is get the player so we're going to go sprites player and we're going to spawn another object we're going to choose the bomb sprite and we're going to put it on layer 0 which is currently our game layer and we're going to do it at image point 1 now the reason I'm not doing it at 0 is because 0 is right down at the bottom where our feet is and I don't want it to be overlapping the base of the map um, of the ground so I want it to just appear um, exactly pretty much where the player is. So let's just check that and see if that works. So at the moment if I push space nothing nothing works which is exactly what we want but when I pick up the bomb it's just adding more bombs every time I hit space. Why is that happening? Let's have a look. On keyboard press space uh, if bombs are greater than equal to one spawn that bomb okay I'm officially stupid um, I figured it out um, it didn't take me too long uh, but I didn't want to figure it out while we're doing the video um, the reason why it wasn't spawning is because I take that off again um, is because I've got this uh, when the player collides with the bomb destroy the bomb so because I was setting the bomb to spawn exactly where the player is it was spawning and immediately being destroyed and added to bombs. So simple. Uh, sometimes you just look at these things and just think what is going on and then it's apparently obvious um, after you stop being stupid. So um, what we're going to need to do to rectify that is we're going to give the, um, I think we're going to create a second bomb. So we're going to create a bomb which is the pickup and then a bomb which is the explosion. So let's right click and we'll just clone the object type and this one is going to be called bomb XP, uh, EXP as in the bomb that's going to explode. Um, this one we can just keep off of camera here. I did create an extra uh, instance of it down there. You don't need to worry about that. In fact, I'm going to just delete that. Um, we've got the bomb up there. When we collect it, we're going to add one to bombs. And then when we push spacebar, we're going to drop this bomb, which is not coded in to be destroyed once we touch it. So let's do that. So on collision with bomb, destroy bomb. Um, go back to the player controls. Um, if you've already got your setup, just leave it there. I was playing around mine. Go into inputs, uh, keyboard, on key pressed, key space. Uh, then we're going to get the player to spawn another object, sprites, player. Uh, just type in it at the top. And spawn another object. Uh, we're going to get the bomb that's going to explode. Uh, layer 0, um, image point 1 because that's where I want to go. I created an extra layer here for items. I'm going to delete that layer. You don't need it. Um, right now, when we push the space bar, we're going to spawn this, but we only want to do that if our uh, bomb count is above zero. So we're going to add that sub event in. We're going to do system. We're going to compare the variable of bombs. If it's greater than or equal to one, then we can do this action. Now that should just work fine. And then we can get on with making the rest. So I can't, I can't drop it yet. Oh. But when I collect it, now I can, and I can drop it. But that one doesn't pulse. We need to add that pulse behavior to it. So it looks like it's going to explode. So let's go back to the layer. Let's go back to our 
Let's drag out a copy here. Oh, it's on the fade layer. I always do that. Change it down to layer zero. Go and lock and hide that. Let's add the sign. Oh, it is on there. Why wasn't that signing? Okay, there we go. Oh, I haven't set it to take another one off. And also, we can drop them midair. We're going to change that as well. We're going to add some physics to it. So if we drop it up here, it's going to fall and roll, which is going to look really nice. Um, although we can just create nice little patterns here. Uh, that's enough messing around. Right. Um, event sheet number one. When we touch the bomb, once we've dropped the bomb, when we press space bar, um, if we've got more than one bomb, we need to go to system and we need to subtract. We need to subtract one from the bombs to make sure that we're keeping a tally of whether we have bombs or whether we haven't bombs. So we press spacebar, we subtract one, we drop one, um, and then that will eventually just explode and destroy the enemies. We also want to add some physics now. Um, and this is going to look really good because it means if we drop a bomb in midair, it's going to fall and then hit the floor. So with our bomb exp um, sprite, click on that, go behaviors, add a new behavior, and let's add physics. And then if we're adding physics to this one, everything it collides with, with needs to also have physics. So I'm going to select the floors, we're going to select all of them. We'll probably have to do the moving platforms as well. Ah. Okay, let's just start with this one a minute. Um, add behavior, add physics. Um, and with this one, if we just leave it like that, now what's going to happen is that this is just going to fall because it's going to it's going to be subject to gravity. So I'll just show you. If we just hit physics on that and we just leave it, it's just going to fall right at the bottom. Everything's going to fall because they're all subject to gravity. So what we need to do is come down here, select it over on the left hand side in the physics properties. We need to select immovable. And I think that's kind of done it. No, all of these will need to be immovable as well. Otherwise, these are going to fall. So we do need to select all of this. That will probably add it to the moving platforms as well. And immovable. Now, hit play. These aren't going to go anywhere, so we can still run on them. But what will happen when we collect our bomb we drop it in midair, it falls to the ground, which is lovely. Um, what we could do, and I don't know if I will do this, but let's just try it. Double click in the sprite for the bomb, the one that's going to explode, and let's just select the uh, bounding box here. Oh, where have I gone? Drag these points just to the edge of here, maybe to there. I just want to make it, make it a little bit right click in one of these little squares, add a point, drag that over to there, I'm going to drag that one over to there, right click, add a point, put that one up there, I'm going to right click, add one more point, put it there. So it's kind of the same. I've done this intentionally because I want it to roll when it, when it falls, but again, I'm going to test it and see. I may not stick with it. Let's go up on the ledge there. Let's get the bomb. Now let's drop it. Does that work? I don't know if I like it. Maybe I like it a little bit more clean. Because if we go in here, um, right click on here, right click on any one of these squares and just set to bounding box again. Because if I drop it on the corner, even with that, like that, it looks clean when you drop it, which I think I prefer, but if we do drop it kind of there, it would still roll. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that, because there will be bits of the level where um, that might actually happen, and I quite like it just sitting upright. Okay, fine, so at the moment it just kind of sits there, just kind of pulsing in and out, ready to explode, but it doesn't actually explode. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add um, a three second timer on the bomb. I may even add some text on it that just counts down three, two, one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but then we want to make it explode. 
and then when it explodes we want to kill whatever is in the blast radius of this thing. So um, on the instance variables, let's give it an instance variable, new instance variable, and we're going to call this one timer. Um, let's call it bomb underscore timer. Give it a number. Uh, it's going to be three. We're going to wait three seconds for it to explode. Now every time we create this, it's going to have that same instance variable with three on it. So go back to the event sheet. Um, when we push spacebar, if we've got more than one bomb, we subtract with one from bombs, we spawn this thing, then we start the timer. So we go action, uh, no, we go uh, blank, sub, uh, blank sub event under here, double click, because we want to be, again, spacebar, when we press the spacebar, if we've got bombs, in fact, we need to drag that under so it's in line. So it's a sub event of this bombs one. So if we press spacebar, if we have one bomb, we drop it. And obviously, once we've dropped it, then this one comes into play. And then we say system every X seconds. So every one second, because it's a three second countdown, we add an action. We go bomb X, uh, EXP, and we need to now subtract from the instance variable. We need to subtract one from bomb timer. So now, once as soon as we drop it, it's not going to happen until we've dropped it. As soon as we drop it, it's going to wait three seconds. It's going to go three, two, one, and then we need to set um, an action to happen if the uh, timer gets to zero. So click on the every one second, hit B for another blank sub event, um, double click, and then we say bomb exp, and we're going to compare the variable. So we're going to compare the bomb timer. When it gets to zero, so if it's equal to zero, what we want to do is destroy it, and then we're going to spawn in a blast, which we'll do in a second. So uh, sprite underscore bomb exp. For now, we'll just destroy it just to see if it works. So that should just work now. It should wait three seconds and then destroy itself. So let's go collect it. I might move that first enemy because that is annoying. Two, three. No, it's not destroying itself. Is this in the wrong bit? Do we need to drag that out? Probably just to there. Um, yeah, it's going to check. It doesn't need to be underneath that, I don't think. Let's just test that. I'm going to definitely move that enemy. He's going to be a pain. Okay, so I just dragged this out. This was under here. Um, it doesn't need to be part of that. It doesn't need to be a sub event of that. So we can drag it out to there. So we've got, when we press the space bar, if we've got more than one bomb, we subtract one and we place the bomb down. Um, and then, yeah, this, this doesn't need to be, that was my error. Every one second, we just need to subtract one from the bomb timer. If the bomb timer reaches zero, timer reaches zero, then we destroy the bomb. Um, I'm just going to go back to the layer here and drag that out to there so he walks along a little bit further. I just need to get rid of this first enemy because it's annoying having to jump over him the whole time. We know he works fine. Let's just get him patrolling that, that platform there. So now when we go, we push play, we jump up, we collect the coins, we've got the bomb, we drop it, one, two, three, and it explodes. Now we need to create a blast. Um, I'm not going to do some, anything too fancy right now, so double click anywhere not on the fade layer, double click anywhere, add a sprite. Now the sprites are 16 by 16, so I'm gonna make the blast radius 32 by 32. And then all we're gonna do is create that circle. Let's, oh, let's do white on top, black on the bottom. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go right out into the corner in one and then we're going to make it the same size as that. For now, I'm just going to do that. Uh, we will animate this um, when we start to polish up the game, but for now, for just function, I just want that to be spawned right on top and then disappear. Um, in fact, let's give it a, a tiny animation. Right-click, duplicate. I'm going to drag in roughly a copy of that, and drag it out one. Roughly a copy of that, drag it out one. Then rough, it doesn't have to be perfect. Drag that out there so it's kind of exploding outwards. Duplicate again. And then all I want to do here is just drag that into the corner. 
delete that. Ah, come on, come on, delete that. Drag a corner, doesn't have to be perfect, into that corner, delete that, delete that. Drag a corner into that corner, get rid of that, get rid of that, and then drag a corner outwards into that corner. So now the blast goes out. I don't know the last one, I'm just going to leave it blank. And make sure the bounding box is set to the whole sprite, even on the last one, because that's still going to be uh, dam it's still going to be able to damage the enemy. Click on animation one, doesn't want to loop. Speed five, that's not fast enough. Let's go speed ten. That's better. Again, we can play around with it. It doesn't really matter. Um, initial frame zero over on the left in the properties. Yep, that's fine. And we're going to call this SPR underscore blast. Last bit of coding, we're going to go into event sheet number one. Um, when the timer reaches zero, we're going to spawn in. So we're going to go bomb exp. We're going to spawn in another object. And that's going to be sprite blast. Layer zero, image point zero, exactly in the middle of that bomb. And then the last thing we're going to do, add an event. In fact, I don't know if I want to put this in player controls. Does it need to be in collectibles? No, we'll keep it in player controls for now. And then the last thing I want to do is go sprite blast. When the anima on the animations section here, when the animations finish playing, and that animation is going to be animation one, so the only one we have. When that's finished playing, then we're going to just destroy it because we don't want it just sitting around invisibly on the screen. Okay, let's check it out. Let's go get it. Could have just put it down here, can I? Two, three, bang. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? I love it. One thing I want to do is just change the opacity of that to 80 so we can see the level behind it. And we last thing we need to do, and then I promise I will end because it's getting a bit on now, get a bit long. Um, I want to make sure that if this blast, any part of this blast radius touches an enemy, the enemy gets destroyed. So we can do that on the enemies tab. Um, so we've got collisions. That seems like a good place to put it because we're going to be colliding with that sprite. So we're going to add an event to collisions. We're going to say enemy one on collision with another object. And that's going to be the blast. Not the bomb, the blast, because they're not going to get killed if they touch the bomb. Just what, what happens after it explodes. Um, then for now, we're just going to destroy the enemy. So we do enemy one, destroy. Now I want to put two bombs in the level because I want to kill both enemies. I'm going to drag out a copy by holding Control or Command if you're on Mac, and we're going to test that out. Make sure that that works perfectly before we end it. So we've got one bomb, we've got two bombs. Now we can not die. Don't die. Oh my word. Wouldn't it be easy if, uh, wouldn't it be helpful if I didn't die? Well, I killed him because the bomb exploded. Let's go kill the other fella. Two, three, there we go. So it works. It works great. We can kill enemies now. Um, there's there's quite a bit of challenge in there. Um, I may actually have to, in the next episode, give the player like three hearts that if we get hit, we lose a heart. Um, and then if we lose all our hearts, then we respawn. Um, I think I will do that because getting hit once and dying is really, really frustrating. But I'm going to leave it there. Um, thanks for checking it out. If you're following along, um, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, I'll respond to, well, while there's you know hardly any subscribers on the channel, I'll respond to all the comments. Um, let me know if there's something that you want me to put in. If you want a mechanic featured, if you want me to put that together and show you how that looks. Uh, let me know and I'll add that in in the next episode. Otherwise, guys, thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next one.